Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Crafty Owl here with the project for cat scrappiness. In today's video, I'm going to be creating a slimline graduation card using one of their newest stencils, Falling Star Lights, as well as one of their fun new blending brushes. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Cat Scrappiness had a recent release where they debuted their stencil line, their mini blending brushes, and some fun new shaker card goodies. I will have a link in the description box below to all of the new items, and I will also have links to the specific products I use today. If you would like a chance to win some cat scrappiness goodies of your own, and you're watching this video kind of shortly after it comes out, there is a hop going over on Instagram. So I will link my stop in the hop down in that description box so you can go check it out, hop along, and be entered to win. Since graduation season is coming up, I thought it would be fun to use a new Falling Starlight stencil to create a graduation card. Now, my local high school, their colors are kind of like a blue and silver, so those are the colors I'll be using today, but you could always switch this up to make it work for your graduate. As I mentioned before, I will be using the new blending brushes. I cannot wait to try this just in those little nooks and crannies on these stars. Over on the left is an oldie but goodie, the uppercase condensed alphabet dies. You know that I have been loving the alphabet dies lately. As I add any more products or tools during the voiceover, I will be sure to let you know what those are. But if I do leave you with any questions, you can leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. To get started, I'm going to be doing the ink blending, and I'm using a powder blue ink and a regular size blending brush for now. This piece of white cardstock is 8.5 by 3.5, so it will completely fill the front of my slimline card. And what I'm going to do is rotate it because I want it to be darker toward the bottom and lighten up toward the top. So you'll see here that after I get my brush with ink on it, I will start at the right side and go from right to left. I go up once with counter, no sorry, I go up once with clockwise motions, then I go up again with counterclockwise. I just think this helps get more of that ink off the brush since you're using all the sides. Now I did do this twice before moving on and now it's time to get that stencil out. I will be using that Falling Starlight stencil, and even though this is only a six by six, you're gonna see how I make it spread all the way across that slimline card. The first thing I did was decide how far up on the background I wanted those stars to go. I did want a little bit of the more dense stars design, but I also wanted some of that at the top where there are fewer stars. So once I figured that placement out, I held it again in place with those same two pieces of blue painters tape and I started doing the same motion as I did originally where I start on the right side and go clockwise up and then counterclockwise up. Now once again just like before I did stencil everything twice just to get darker blue but here you'll want to make sure at the end that you don't stencil all the way to it because here in just a minute we're going to have to move the stencil and we do want a little bit of wiggle room to get that next set lined up. 
After I had the first half done, I then moved the stencil around until I thought the pattern made a nice repetition. Now this is not going to be perfect. You'll line it up the best that you can. You do want to make sure to cover up any of the previous stars that you have blended onto just so you don't go back over those and make them darker or make partial stars. Once you have done both halves of the slimline, you'll then need to go in and fix any of the stars that aren't quite dark enough because of where you pieced it together. Now this is where that mini blending brush is going to come in perfectly. I lined up the first part of the stencil again, and then using the little blending brush, I inked it up with the blue and fixed those stars. So you can see here now, they're all about the same darkness. There is a little place where it's not a perfect you know lineup but I think with the letters on it later it's gonna work out great Speaking of letters, that's what I'm going to take care of now. I got out the dies to spell congrats, and then I got out two scraps of cardstock from my stash. They're both kind of metallic or foily looking. One is a silver and one is a light blue. And I took these off camera and I cut a set in each color. Now that those are done, I'm going to bring in my art glitter glue in that fine tip bottle, and I'm going to layer these letters together so there's a little bit of offset. Now to do this, I'm going to put a line of glue toward the upper left of the shadow, which will be the silver, and then I place my blue letter on top of it. To kind of get them to smush together better, I did flatten it there with that block, and then I continued to do each of these letters until they were all done, trying to keep that shift of the shadow uniform for each letter. My ink blending had had some time to dry, so now we're going to add a little sparkle using that same stencil. To do this, I got out my Transfer Gel Dual and some silver glitter. Now I do know that this gel is meant for foiling, but it's really the only thing I had in my stash that I could use with a stencil to add the glitter with. Now what I did is I figured out where the stencil was before, so I lined it up with those first stars, and then I shifted it a little to the left and a little to the top. Now you will have some overlap of the stars, you'll see some of the blue ones poking through, but just align it so you like it best. Then I take my little spatula and that gel and I go and I add it in each of the openings. Once again, be very careful of not going over to the right where you did not have any stenciling yet. Once I pulled up the stencil, I added the glitter after putting a piece of this just scrap graph paper underneath it so I could tap off the excess glitter. I then set this piece aside for one hour to dry. Before moving on to that next end, I really wanted to make sure that it was nice and dry. The next step was basically the same where I lined up the stencil with the previous stars and shifted it and did the gel and the glitter and allowed it to dry for one more hour. On this side, you do want to make sure that you cover up any of the stars on the left with sticky notes. And yeah, once again, it just needed time to dry. Here is a look at that finished piece once it had dried. I am absolutely in love with all of this sparkle. After two hours of glittering, my letters definitely had time to dry, so now it's time to get these onto the card base. Now you could definitely use foam tape on these, but I decided to just adhere them flat down to that card front. I do want to offset these a little bit, so I brought in this piece of graph paper to help me align all of the letters and still make sure that they would fit in that eight and a half inches wide. Once I had them in place, I brought in my roll of scotch blue removable tape, pulled off a piece that was just a little bit longer than my letters, and quickly put that on there and adhered all of the letters together. This is going to allow me to flip everything over and add that adhesive to the back. Now I probably was a little bit more generous with adhesive than normal because of that glittery kind of uneven background. I wanted to make sure that there was enough so it would adhere nicely. 
After the glue was on the back, I flipped it over to the card front, centered it as best as I could, and then pressed that down. I let this sit for about five minutes to dry, and then I removed those blocks, and you'll see here how nice and cleanly that removable tape pulls off the letters. To finish this card off, I added my ink blended piece to the front of a slimline card base, and because there was already so much sparkle with those stars, I didn't need to add any bling. So here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.